Hey, podheads, pod people, pod squad. I don't know, you tell me below. Thanks so much for joining me today. We are going to talk about the comics that I read on my day off reading comics. So stick around, let's talk comics. Hey Podheads, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Starbuck, aka the Prince of Dorkness, and today was my day off reading comics. So I'm here to give you a quick thumbs up, thumbs down review of the books that I read and tell you whether or not you should get them. So thanks so much for sticking around, I really appreciate it. Speaking of sticking around, we have a bunch of new subscribers, so thank you to all of you new subscribers and thank you to the folks that subscribed on the first day. I love you all and I'm so thankful for you. Uh, we hit that 50 subscriber mark and we smashed it. Uh, last I checked, we were at like 98 subscribers, so thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, the channel's come just a really long way in just the last four weeks and we are continuing to do our best to grow, so again. Thank you. So, without further ado, I'm sorry to keep you so long. Let's talk about the books I read this week. And remember to stick around to the end of the uh, show because I do have a question for all of you that collect floppies still. I have something that maybe you can help me with. Now, G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, Yo Joe. This was the first book I read this week. I'm really disappointed, guys, with what IDW has done with the Joe license over the last, I don't know, what is it, 10, 11 years? You know, I still read the Larry Hama, A Real American Hero, but they keep doing stuff like this to me. I thought that this was like a new one-shot. Instead, because the solicitation was blank when I originally pre-ordered it, it turns out that it is just another collection. It's a good collection. It's got like a the origin of Shadowstorm and, you know, a bunch of other books that you've read a half dozen times already if you're a fan. So uh, stick aw stay away from this one. Uh, moving on. Alien. This is number 10 by Philip Kennedy Johnson, Salvador La Roca, Guru, and FX. Uh, I like where they're going with this one. I didn't like the first... Um, well, <clears throat> let me take that back. I did like... Uh, I've liked the series all the way through, but I was afraid that Marvel was going to do what IDW did with the Aliens license, which is do a bunch of like really short vignettes and short stories and mini arcs and, and things like that, that although fit into the overall narrative, don't really have anything to do with each other. I wasn't seeing a lot of like overall arc in this book up until, uh, you know, the last couple of issues, and I'm really starting to appreciate that. Makes me feel like a book that I can stick around, read, and continue seeing what's going on with these characters. So, uh, Aliens is a big thumbs up. Newburn. Man, Image is killing it. And, well, I should say, Chip Zdarsky is killing it. Uh, Newburn number four by Chip Zdarsky and Jacob Phillips on Image Comics. This book uh, it has just continually gotten better. I mean, we've got basically a private detective that works for all of the mob bosses and his job is to take care of inter-mob struggles so that the police don't have to and everyone's happy that way. In this issue, uh, well, following the previous issue, a police officer has been killed by the mob. The police want to hire uh, Newburn for themselves and of course now we get into some really tricky business working for both the cops and the mob uh fun book fun writing absolutely worth checking out all right so this was the biggest surprise of the week for me and that was black panther number four by ridley cabal mustafa and Mila. uh this book uh it's it's getting really good i'm starting to really like the the whole storyline with t'challa having um kind of lost his power, his seat of power in Wakanda and the operatives that he had placed around the globe as uh, silent operatives are being targeted by someone who's killing them. Uh, I really like the book right now, but more than anything, what I really noticed in this issue was in one scene, T'Challa goes, I think he goes to Mars and he meets with Storm 
and Storm is drawn so incredibly well in this book. Um, they do the whole, like, her hair is kind of like a white billowy cloud that goes down her back. And, of course, it just kind of dissipates into fog. But you can see the uh, the lightning streaks through the, through the hair. It gives me so much feeling of, like, an old Sam Keith painting style artwork. It's just incredible. Definitely check this out, if nothing else, for the artwork. But the storyline's getting pretty good. Super Massive, for also from Image Comics. I didn't know what this was. To be honest with you guys, I have no clue what Super Massive was. Uh, I, it clearly seemed like there was some kind of backstory that I hadn't read already. It sounds like there's a book called Massive. Um, I really got a real strong like Power Rangers vibe from this. Uh, I felt like, yeah, it was too young for me. Uh, it wasn't my thing. Uh, I also picked up Rogue Sun, which I knew that this came before and was kind of like team like pairing up to do kind of like a shared universe thing. Uh, but after reading this one, I, I didn't read the Rogue Sun because I just I don't think it's for me. The artwork is beautiful. I love the rich colors and the vibrant pinks and blues and greens. Um, but I mean, like like I said, I just I feel like it's a grown up Power Rangers and that seems weird to me. Uh, next thing I read was Marvel's Moon Knight. This is number six by McKay, Capuccio, and Rosenberg. Uh, man, Moon Knight's a good book right now. Uh, I really liked the... Uh, I like that it came back, of course, to Mark, and we're back in the uh, doctor's office, the psychiatrist's office, which I, I'm not sure if she's compromised or, like, what's going on, so... Uh, this book is fun, it's action-packed, and it's got some cool adult themes. I really like it. I think everyone should be reading it. Big thumbs up. X-Men, number nine. Uh, man, I, I just kept getting surprised. Uh, so, I don't know if it's Duggan or Dugan. I, I've heard both ways now. Uh, we got Villa and Gracia. This book is, to me, so much better than the Hickman run. I'm really enjoying it. I like uh, kind of, I don't know. I like the story. I like the artwork. It's finally starting to grasp me again after uh, Jonathan Hickman kind of totally lost me. I know it's an unpopular opinion. I apologize. Please flame me below. Uh, but X-Men, I would say it was a thumbs up. I really like what's going on with Cyclops and, and everything that's going on with that. Moving on to the Bat books, uh, start with Batman number 121. Uh, this is Williamson, Kershaw, Molina, uh, and the backup with Janet McKeg and Maury. Uh, I really liked this issue. I didn't, you know, I, I, I knew that the villain of the, of the last several issues was going to be just kind of a lackey for um, Luthor, and, you know, Abyss kind of was, but I really did enjoy this story. I think that so many times in comic books we see characters flip-flop and betrayals done and that kind of thing. It's kind of nice to see these characters just kind of being loyal to each other. So I, uh, I really enjoyed Batman number 121 and I am excited to see what Chip Zdarsky is going to be doing on Batman coming up here real soon. Detective Comics. Uh, this one is issue... 1055, uh, this is Tamaki Rosenberg and, oh, I don't know how to say that, Naul Pan, uh, with backup by Blanco and Belair. Uh, this book did get better this week. It's been so slow, but I, I thought uh, that it's definitely picked up. If you haven't been following Detective Comics, like if you haven't been reading for the last 10 weeks or whatever, don't start here. Um, the, the, they're almost wrapping up the storyline. Uh, but... I, I did enjoy the book, and I think that they've definitely stepped it up from uh, the last couple of issues. Thumbs up. Action comics. So, okay, so to be fair, I read three action comics, starting with uh, issue number 1038 by Johnson, Mendonca, and Lucas. Uh, it was good. I enjoyed the book. Uh, surprisingly, I, it took me forever to, to start reading it because I wanted a few issues so that I could kind of jump into what was happening in Action Comics with actual Kal-El 
and know what was going on. We're in the, this one was the third part of the War World saga and, you know, clearly I went in blind, kind of not knowing what was going on with the whole Mongol storyline and whatnot, but it, it, it did a good enough job of at least keeping me in the, the scene and in the moment with the characters. Really enjoyed it. Uh, then I picked up the, the following issue, the Action Comics 1039. Now this one was Johnson Aldridge and Federici, uh, Federici um, along with the backup by Mello, Luridge, and Hi-Fi. This book I liked even more. Uh, the artwork really lent to the storytelling. Uh, storytelling in the book, it was kind of like a, like a Clark Kent diary issue, uh, and I really, really enjoyed it. So uh, the artwork is definitely a step up from the first one I I read, or at least more fitting to the story that I was reading. So I really enjoyed this book. Uh, sorry, obviously it's a little bit late, uh, and then I followed that up with the same team doing uh, issue ten forty. Uh, again, same story. Like, I really enjoy, you know, I, I wish that I'd gotten the beginning of the story to find out how we got to where we are. And sometimes in comic books, it's actually better that you don't because that could be a whole can of worms. But I, uh, I am really enjoying the action comics War World Saga um, and excited to see where that goes. Uh, it's pretty brutal. I, I really like it. That brings me to the book of the week. And that is Noctera by... Uh, Scott Snyder, Tony S. Daniel, Marcelo Maiolo, and this is number eight from Image Comics. Oh my god, guys, Noctera is the best book I'm reading every month without fail. Uh, I talked about it last week, and then, uh, you know, we talked about the Blacktop Bill special in, in number eight, uh, or excuse me, number seven. Number eight's awesome. Uh, I'm not even going to begin to, I, I don't want to tell you anything. There's it's too big of a spoiler, but let's just say the ending is not what you expect. Uh, well, unless you've been reading comics for like 40 years, then you might expect it. But other than that, it's fantastic. It's gory. It's just continuing to build on the mythos and the lore that Scott Snyder's been writing. And Tony S. Daniel is so fantastic. I just love everything about this book. If you're not reading it, do yourself a favor. I think you can pick up the first trade now start reading it. It's great. And that's the end of my books, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around. I do have one request for you, though. For those of you that read floppies that get your books every month, particularly those of you that do not go to a local comic shop to do so. So I currently get my book through one of the big online chains. I won't say which one, but needless to say, I'm becoming a little frustrated with constant shipping delays and issues with my books being week, uh, a week or sometimes even two weeks late. It's very hard to do these things like, hey, let's check out the new comic books when I have two weeks ago's comic books. So please, in the comments below, let me know what service you use if you do mail order. If you do like one of the big online actual comic book stores, let me know which one you do. Um, how can I get my books delivered to me as quickly as possible without having to drive 40 miles to the best nearest comic shop? So thank you so much for your input. I always appreciate you potheads. Thank you so much. And when all else fails, take a nap. Good night.